district. And some people never get it. And they never get the, the, the actual formula for what work involves. Absolutely. And then we also get... And we also so get people to complain up. about people. and we also get people to complain yeah. about work because they complain about other people doing work because they feel that it's work that uh how can I put it, work that is um not deemed as successful by society. Because, you know, a lot of people get mad at the the dealer and the people like that that are doing work and making money but because they're on the wrong side of the law, folks are like, yeah. Well, you know, they don't Absolutely. understand the principle of work. That's they right. actually, they probably understand the principle of work. They just need to move the principle of work to the legal side. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And to me, it is so simple. You get out what you put in, okay? And and that's that's nothing new. Um, hang out with people who are about something. Hang out with people that you trust. And if you're right. not learning something new every day, you're behind eight ball. Because one of the things I've always been amazed by you and even other people that are in the same age range as you and others, whether it's Miss McLaughlin who's in her hundreds or it's yourself or my dad who's in his late 70s, I've always been amazed that y'all all say that same thing, is that you're supposed to learn until the day they put you in the ground. But, you know, some folks get this attitude that after they get their college degree, they're supposed to stop learning. But... I thought that you were always supposed to learn every day something new, if it ain't but something new about the people that you're around, because we're always learning about the character of the people that we work with. Every day is a new day. Exactly. So you, need, you need some information to be applicable for that day. You ain't never been here before today. Today was right. brand new, and it's gone. It's gone, and just keep it up. Even on the minimum side, you got some people that they don't have any TV in their homes, and they don't listen to no games or none of that stuff. They just learn, just learning. So how the hell are you gonna yeah, I mean, keep up with a person like that? Yeah, because I guess one of the things that's happening in modern day society, which becomes an issue, is you got some people that, just use, like you said, they get so caught up with the um, the minor concerns of life. I mean, they're not minor all the, all together, but I know a lot of people get hung up about what their um, coworkers are doing or what is going on that's affecting them, but not necessarily affecting them in a true sense of the word, but like worrying about how they're being treated at their job or spending time seeing what's happening on the different social media and things of that nature. Now, that can be beneficial if it's helping you with your business and it can help with your business, but sometimes I think people get too caught up with it and don't pay attention to how it can be used as a business tool. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm I'm outlining a manual um um and a the title of my manual would be de- deletion. Okay, with your computer, every now and again you got to call somebody in to delete some of that stuff and put up a fire, a wall or whatever. Well, we we keep adding on these kids and everybody. Just add on, add on, add on. You're about to explode. You need to take a class, my class on deletion. You can't. Some of the, some of us are not wise enough to delete it ourselves. You got to take a class, and you feel better because, for instance. If you are physically constipated, do you want more food? No. If you're constipated, you want, you don't want more food. You've had enough food. You oh. need to find a way to get rid of some of that excess stuff that's oh, in your goodness. stomach that's impacting All right. you. All right. Intellectually, if you're constipated, spiritually you're constipated, you need to get rid of that waste. Right. A lot of people are in pain. That's why they go on drugs. They're in pain because... They don't know how to delete some of that stuff. They're about to explode. Okay? One thing about upholstery, upholstery is an excellent um, program to teach you how to delete. We tear off all the old fabric, and we use the old pattern to cut the new, so we do everything with care, the old and the new. And we don't do half old, half new. We take off all the old. And if you see the operation, I do the same thing with people. 
I upholster people. Nothing wrong with his body. It's his mindset. I strip him off his mindset, but when you strip something off, you got to replace it with something. And so many of these kids, they grew up with nothing of value. They did some things that, oh, that has no value. There's no value there. There's no value there. And now I got to delete all that stuff and replace it with something of value. Right. All right. That's, and, and we do that up the, at the upholstery shop to let them physically see what we do to a sofa. And I said, well, I'm going to do the same thing to you in your mind. Mm-hmm. Trust me. And a lot of times folks don't understand it. They think it's just got to be something complicated, but as you have proved quite often, the things that we need to do to be successful is not the most complicated things in the world. We don't necessarily have to learn. Uh, I mean, if yeah. you want to, that's fine, but you don't have to necessarily learn rocket science. So you can learn just very basic common sense things that can help you make the money that you need to make and be a success in your life. Because if you make it too complicated, how are you going to do the experiment? we got to keep it simple. Simple as baking a cake. There's a lot of knowledge right in baking a cake. Because if you right. have the eggs or something out and you bake it, see, you can't put it in now. It's too late. You got to start all over again. With some things in life, you can't start all over again. So you better make damn sure that you putting it, you inserting it at the proper time. Check the list. Check it twice. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I'm surprised that more. But, I mean, a lot of the things that you say make a lot of sense. And even in our own business schools, I mean, I'm surprised that uh, they don't use this kind of, like, common sense approach at, like, Fuquay Business School at Duke or at the schools at Harvard or Yale because a lot of what you say makes sense and has been making sense for decades. I mean, um, Jefferson, Ben Franklin, and all of them, they were using the same kinds of of common sense approach that you were talking about back in the early 17th and 18th centuries. But uh, folks try to make it more complicated than it needs to be. You know what? As simple as uh, the cell phone. Oh, the cell phone is an interesting gadget. The tissue, if you can understand that this information comes from out in the air somewhere, right? comes come to your phone. Now, Let's start all over again. Every night, what I do, I I I, um, I hook my phone up. And a couple of times, I thought I had it hooked up, but it wasn't. Now, what I'm doing is comparing hooking up your cell phone to hooking up yourself with God. Okay? Now, if you can understand where that information comes into your phone. Now, let's follow... God coming into you. Use your cell phone. And it wouldn't hurt that every night or every morning you make your connection with your God. Right. Okay, just like you make, you hook your phone up and you make a connection with it. And you don't let people borrow your phone. You keep your phone with you all the time. That's uh-huh. about as personal as you can get. If you can conceive what's happening to your cell phone, well, you now you're beginning to understand a little about God. Because ain't no way in the world you can go to God and don't understand your cell phone. If you don't understand your cell phone on how you make the connection, then how are you going to understand how you make your connection with God? Right. Now, but a lot of times the, folks don't want to... It seems like a lot of times folks don't want to understand the fact that we are all made of all these connections. You know, they either want to be overly physical or overly mental or overly spiritual, but it, it seems to me that you've got to have all of those elements, even if you're going to be a success at all, that you've got to have a little bit of your spiritual connection, your physical connection, your mental connection, and any of the other connections that might be out there. But it seems like a lot of times society just kind of like wants to make everybody uniform to some degree. No, but these these are personal things. Some things are personal, and some things are done as conspiracy to confuse you and keep you under, way under the radar. 
Uh, one one thing about by definition, the, uh, democracy. I can't give you a good definition. I can give you an example. The big fish always eat the little ones. You can never become a big fish without eating the little ones. It right. ain't too cool when you think. And and in a democracy, everybody is responsible for themselves. This is not this is not a um, Soviet Union where the government is responsible for you. No, in a democracy, everybody is responsible for themselves. For themselves. If you think I'm responsible for you, you're going to have a problem out of me. And, and if I share, I'll give you crumbs. You don't think I'm going to give you the cake and I take the crumbs. I had a guy, I had a guy a couple of years ago, he was telling me how blessed I was. And I told him I didn't deny that. He, in the things I had accumulated, and he said he wanted that. I said, well, follow me around for a week, and let me show you what it cost me. Follow me around for a week. After the third day, he told me that, Brown, whatever you get, I don't want it because I don't want to pay that kind of price. Okay, a lot of people are that way. They want the pie in the sky. They want it to fall out through the lottery system. But, um, no, I work, I work hard. And I try to work smart. Um, in some people's days, there's uh, 12 hours, 8 hours, 6 hours. No. No, I sleep 6 hours. The rest of the time, um, I don't get involved in sports and what have you. I don't like sports. So I save that time catching up on, uh, and getting ahead. Catching up, getting ahead. Catching up, getting ahead. And that's my rhythm, catching up, getting ahead, okay? And and in America, you see, nobody's stopping you to get to the top. If you find somebody that's stopping you, identify that person. I'll kick his butt. <laughs> I, think, I think you find out that you, you build an imaginary fence and um, and you are your biggest enemy. Ain't nobody stopping you. Get the hell out of your way. So you said that the biggest problem that we have is getting out of our own way is because a lot of times we're uh, defeating ourselves. Oh, yeah. And stay away from negative people. You ought to be okay. Because some people hang out with negative people to help them to do nothing. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And I can never figure out why people would want to hang out with negative people in the first place. If they're negative, wouldn't they be defeating your cause? It seems to me that that would be the last thing you would want to do is hang out with negative people because that just seems like that defeats your cause altogether. Well, there are a lot of people, they are very happy with the basic, okay? Shelter on the bridge or what have you, just enough to eat at the shelter and what have you. Well, wow, that's moody because the people giving you these things, they might change their mind. Now what you got to do. Right. Okay. So you're saying some people just get content with the way that they are, even if it might not be to their best cause. So they just get content with living yeah. that life that they have, even though it's not for the best of their sake. Yeah. And I'm letting them know that it ain't that hard. Take out with me, and I'll tell you the simple way. You know, you ain't got to have a, a Mercedes to get to and from work. The, the, the purpose of a car is to take you from point A to point B. It can't right. cook. It can't talk or nothing. It just takes you from point A to point B. A car is a car. <laughs> so you say it doesn't matter whether it's a hoopty or a Rolls Royce. It's the point is to get you from no. point A to point B and for you to be <laughs> successful. No more and no less. And if you're doing it to impress Roger Brown, I don't give a damn. I don't care. I don't care. Don't do that for me. You don't care for me if you. I don't care. I don't rate people like that. And and a lot of people don't realize, um, Lee, that there are two sets of Joneses. One of them, they get you in trouble. You do things uh, just because they see somebody else doing it. 
That's one set. That set will get you in trouble because you don't know how that 